Madam President, I ask unanimous consent to uh, be allowed to engage in a colloquy with my colleagues. Without objection. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Madam President, as uh, members of this body know that for the past nine months, I've come to the floor every week to offer a doctor's second opinion on the new health care law. I do this as someone who's practiced medicine, taking care of families around the state of Wyoming for a quarter of a century. Well, each week, I repeatedly criticize another one of the unintended consequences of this health care law, a law that I think is bad for patients, bad for providers, the nurses and the doctors who take care of those patients, and, and bad for the taxpayers. Now, Americans heard how this law breaks most of the President's promises about health care reform. Uh, and that, Madam President, is why on Election Day, Americans across our country spoke out. They called on Washington to work to repeal and replace this law. The Republicans have answered. We realize we cannot just object to the law. We must do our best to repeal and replace it. Uh, and that's why I'm delighted this morning, Madam President, to be joined uh, on the floor uh, by Senator Wicker from Mississippi. He is joining me to talk about his new bill that he is introducing today that will allow state officials to challenge federal regulations before those regulations actually go into effect. This will allow states to fight back against outrageous health care regulations that continue to be written. With that, Madam President, I'd like to ask my colleague if he would please share uh, with the body and with the country uh, the remarkable bill that you're introducing today. Well, I thank my colleague uh, from Wyoming, Senator Barrasso, a, a practicing physician in his own right. Uh, I, I thank my friend for repeatedly coming to the floor and simply bringing the, uh, the facts to the attention of our membership and to the American people. This was an unpopular piece of legislation when we were considering it. We, we uh, wasted most of a year when we should have been talking about job creation and the economy, talking about uh, the uh, over, overhaul of uh, our entire health care system uh, with the Obamacare proposal. It was unpopular when it was enacted. It was an unpopular when it was signed into law. We saw that in election after election, the two elections in New Jersey and Virginia. We saw it in spades in the Massachusetts election where it was the central issue. But this Congress persisted against the will of the American people. And because of the facts as presented by Dr. Barrasso and also the facts uh, that are coming to light and that people are finding out uh, in their own lives with their own insurance policies, this law is even more unpopular uh, and more uh, unsatisfactory than it was at the, at the very beginning. It should be repealed, lock, stock, and barrel. It should be defunded, uh, and, uh, and it should be replaced by something market-driven and something workable. Now, uh, in, an, in an additional attempt to address this very wrong-headed piece of legislation, a few moments ago, uh, I introduced the uh, 10th Amendment Regulatory Reform Act. Now, to remind uh, my colleagues, the 10th Amendment to the Constitution explicitly states, and I quote, the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states, respectively, or to the people, end of quote. This amendment, this part of the Bill of Rights, expressly limits the powers of the federal government for important reasons. When we look back to the early days of the United States, it is clear that the Founding Fathers believed in a limited federal government. Having just defeated a monarchy with near absolute power, our founders sought a different way of governing, one based on controlled size and scope. Our Founding Fathers repeatedly stated their opposition to a federal government with expansive powers. In Federalist Number 45, James Madison wrote, the powers delegated by the proposed Constitution to the federal government are few and defined. When have we heard that lately? He goes on to say, those which are to remain in state governments are numerous and indefinite. This may come as a surprise to people who have viewed the Congress of the United States 
in the past few years. Madison wrote the phrase few and defined. Despite this fact, constitutional limits on the federal government are rarely enforced today, and I hope to change this through my legislation. Federal agencies uh, routinely uh, usurp the rights of states by promulgating regulations that are contrary to the spirit and the letter of the Tenth Amendment to the Constitution. The Code of Federal Regulations now totals an expansive 163,333 pages. While some of the rules contained in it are necessary, many of them simply are not, adding burdens, headaches, and costs for millions of Americans and forcing unnecessary federal spending at a time when the U.S. borrows 40 cents for each dollar we spend. These rules and regulations also take power from states and they take power from individual Americans. This bill would allow states to challenge unconstitutional mandates before these mandates take effect. Much of the new health care law gives unelected bureaucrats the power to write rules and regulations required to implement Obamacare. Overall, the new health care law creates 159 bureaucracies, according to a study by the Joint Economic Council. Countless federal regulations will have to be written to implement the law. A requirement for Americans to purchase government-approved health insurance, a central piece of Obamacare, explicitly oversteps the Tenth Amendment. Under no other circumstances do we force individuals to pay for something they may not want or cannot afford simply because they are Americans, which is what this law attempts to do. Many rules and regulations will be required to implement this provision. According to one analysis, the Internal Revenue Service will need to hire 16,000 new IRS employees to enforce this individual mandate. Each of these bureaucrats will be governed by, by agency rules created in the coming months and years, and we read in the paper today it may even be decades before all of these rules will be created. Once these regulations are written, it will again require costly and time-consuming court uh, proceedings to overturn them. Instead of, uh, you, uh, instead of forcing the American people to wait for a remedy, we should have agencies address these problems at the outset. And this bill would go a long way to doing that. It would provide special standing for designated state government officials to dispute regulations issued by administration agencies attempting to implement new federal laws or presidential executive orders. Under the legislation, any rule proposed by a federal agency would be subject to constitutional challenges if certain state officials determine the rule infringes on powers reserved to the states under the Tenth Amendment. States are already challenging the massive federal takeover in court because of the mandates on both states and individuals. I'm proud to say that 43 of the 50 states have either joined lawsuits or taken other official action to stop its constitutional uh, provisions, its unconstitutional provisions, I might say. This bill would give state officials another tool at their disposal to challenge the unconstitutional overreach of the federal government. And so I urge my colleagues to join me in this legislation. It's late in this Congress, but uh, there's another one looming with reinforcements coming uh, from the people. And I appreciate my colleague uh, uh, allowing me to join him today in this discussion of a doctor's second opinion. I'm uh, very impressed by uh, what you have come up with in this uh, leadership position to, uh, to take that next step forward to protect our rights that you and I believe are in the Constitution and apply to the people of our states and apply to the people of this country. Uh, one would, uh, would hope that uh, everyone would join in and that this, uh, Madam President, I would ask uh, unanimous consent to be added as an original co-sponsor of this piece of legislation. Without objection. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, you had mentioned the unelected bureaucrats in in the in uh, in your in your comments, and 
Uh, there was a story in today's New York Times, and I'd like to ask a couple of questions of you from that story because I think it gets to the to the, to the point that you're making. This is. Uh, by Eric Licklow and, and Robert Pear. And Madam President, I ask uh, to be able to put a, this uh, story from today's New York Times uh, uh, as a part of the uh, congressional record. Without objection. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, it talks about federal rule makers, and that's who I believe you're talking about, these unelected bureaucrats. Federal rule makers, it says, long the, ne the neglected stepchildren of Washington bureaucrats suddenly find themselves at the center of power. The bureaucrats at the center of power as they scramble to work out details of hundreds, hundreds of sweeping financial as well as health care regulations that will ultimately affect most Americans. We're talking about not just the health care law, but also the financial regulation board. And, and the, the one paragraph I really wanted to, want to ask you about, it says, but the laws were so broad and complex that executive branch regulators will have wide leeway in determining what the rules should say, and how they should be carried out. Well, isn't that why we need your piece of legislation? To let the states get in there before some of these rules and regulations are put onto the, the people of Mississippi, the people of Wyoming, and the people all across the country. Well, the, the uh, senator is, is absolutely correct. And, and, and this, if coming from the, from the New York Times in particular, this article is an astounding a uh, bit of information for the American people, and they need to know about it. I think the American people have the quaint idea that, that their elected officials, both in the executive branch and in the legislative branch, are, are, uh, should be the center of power. I didn't come to Washington to be powerful, but at least I have to stand before my constituencies every so often and, and get their approval. What this article says is that the bureaucrats are now at the center of power because of this Obamacare legislation and the financial services legislation. We have enacted, over my vote and over the senator's vote from, uh, from Wyoming, a 2,700-page health care overhaul and yet we're told it, the main thing it does is empower bureaucrats and make them uh, the, the decision makers. And certainly, if, uh, if this is the result of this unfortunate piece of legislation, a governor or a speaker of the House of Representatives at the state level ought to be able to quickly and expeditiously go to federal court and say, wait a minute. This, is, this violates the Tenth Amendment. All we're saying is they need a path to go quickly to the federal court and challenge this. I, I'm sure the senator uh, noticed this also. Here's just one example. Uh, in neighboring Bethesda, Maryland, this new Obamacare law has resulted in 200 health regulators rushing to a new facility there and paying twice the fair market value. This is Uncle Sugar coming in. They can pay as much money as they want to. So they pay twice the fair market value in rent. And they've, got, they've taken over three floors of a, a suburban office building to uh, begin getting started on actually writing the rules that will apply uh, this federal uh, mandate to the people. It, it's amazing. And you know, actually... Uh, I'll say this to my friend, uh, when we talk about defunding the federal government, I'd like for our appropriations committees, our investigation committees, both House and Senate, to look into how they get the right to pay twice the far mar fair market value. Well, it, it's astonishing, and uh, I know the people of Wyoming as well as the people of Mississippi always oppose Washington wasteful spending, but, but when I read that the, uh, the health care officials are leasing more than 70 thousand square feet of space on three floors of this office building in, in Bethesda for 230 employees rushing to uh, rulemaking the, uh, and, the, and to see that the government, Washington, agreed to pay over $51 a square for usable square foot compared with the average of less than $30 a square foot in Bethesda. Why? Because it wanted to get the operation running in July. They were rushing to get to this 
but yet also it says that uh, this may only be the beginning. This may only be the beginning. A recent report, not by my colleague from Mississippi, and, and, and not by me, but by the Congressional Research Service, said that the publications of rules under the health care law could stretch out for decades to come. Uh, and that's why I'm going to co-sponsor this legislation. I have great concerns about states' rights, individual rights being trampled on by a Washington government that is out of control in terms of spending, and it is doing it in spite of the cries of the American people. So I want to congratulate and, 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 and compliment uh, my colleague uh, from Mississippi uh, for bringing this piece of legislation to the Senate today and uh, help joining me on the floor uh, as part of a doctor's second opinion, uh, because you don't have to be a doctor to know that this health care law is not good for patients, it's not good for providers, it's not good for taxpayers, and as more and more people see the rules and the regulations come, they will once again see the broken promises by this president, who said if you like your health care, the program, you get to keep it, and then they turned two pages, these rules and regulators, rule makers said they turned two pages into 121 pages, which said for many people in this country, they're not going to be able to keep what they have. They're not going to be able to keep what's been promised to them. And it's because the rules and the regulations are so complicated and the rulemaking continues. If I might add, it, um, this is really a new chapter in, in the history of the American federal government. Uh, according to the senior vice president of the American Benefits Council, quote, there has never been a period like what we're going through now in terms of the sheer volume and complexity of rulemaking. Uh, my friend, this is unprecedented in American history. The, the scope, the cost, the magnitude of this legislation is unprecedented, according to the American Benefits Council. And the point of my bill is that it does violence to the Bill of Rights. It does violence to uh, the intent of the Founding Fathers that the federal government be limited in its power and scope and that we uh, leave most of the rights that, w that we are endowed with um, by our Creator. We leave most of those rights to the people and to the states themselves. So uh, it, it's, um, it's a great uh, privilege to join uh, my colleague today in, in, uh, in making these points. Well, uh, with that, Madam President, I just want to thank and congratulate uh, my colleague for his, his vision and his foresight and his leadership, because uh, this is, I believe, how the Founding Fathers would have seen it. Those who wrote the Constitution, I believe, would be on board with this piece of legislation to say, as the Tenth Amendment does say, the power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states, respectively, or to the people. And with that, Madam President, I yield the floor.